violations. We want all other cooperating partners to emulate the United States of America in coming up with a report that depicts the human rights uh, violations in this country. And we feel that uh, publishing that report silently is not enough. What has happened to the practice where the ambassador came out to speak to the reporters was the case in the past. We are surprised that this particular report was published silently. We want to call upon the American government Put to sanctions. date the press and speak to their report and begin to issue or put sanctions on this government so that we can see them you know, improve the human rights record as it were. Our young men and women, youths like Thompson, campaigned heavily for the UPND. The UPND are in power now because of youths like Thompson Piri. It's the same government now is standing against youths like Thompson Piri, all because Thompson Piri has exercised his constitutional right of belonging to a political party of his choice. We fought against this kind of uh, dictatorship many years back. Uh, countrymen and women, we are standing here as members of parliament, and we are making one undertaking to you. We will not rest. We will fight and ensure that we restore the constitutional democracy that we fought for many years back. I thank you very much. I'll call upon the, the chair lady for the women to speak. Okay. Uh, thank you and a very good evening. As women, I'm sure you can see my fellow female parliamentarians who are very, very sad. Actually, it's a very sad era in our country. What we are seeing, the police brutality, I can only feel for Mr. Patel's family. You can imagine the anxiety that is going through his family. Where is he? Is he okay? And we're calling upon just not only the, the international community, even us women must arise and begin to speak. These are our husbands. These are our brothers. These are the men that they are abducting every day. Just like leader of opposition has said, Honorable Mwimbu, less than 30 minutes ago was denying that there are no abductions in this country. So where is Mr. Patel if there are no abductions? His family has the right to know. We as party members also have the right to know. This is Zambia plunging into a police state. And we are in a police state. I think everyone has the right to justice. And we're not saying wrongdoers should not be uh, uh, prosecuted. We're not saying the rule of law should not prevail. But we're saying in a democratic dispensation, the rule of law must prevail. But what we're seeing today is that anybody that says anything against government, the next day they'll be abducted, put, locked up in police cells. This is not the democracy that the Zambian people had fought for. I want all Zambians to begin to speak. This is our country. Our identity is Zambian before any tribe. We must begin to speak about these injustices. If we do not speak about these injustices, believe you me, we are going to plunge into a one-party state. And before we know it, this country would have been drawn back 10 years. We must arise to the occasion. This is our country. Women, ladies, children, youths, all of us have a partake in this country. So we will not be intimidated by the police brutality. We shall rise to the occasion. We shall stand and fight for our country. This is our country. And that we can assure you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, countrymen and women. That was a submission from our... Uh, 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 chairperson for, for, for women and uh, our women are, are, are spending sleepless nights these are our mothers we had a lot of pressure from our women because young Thompson is like their son and you know they, they, they were wondering why he should be incarcerated uh, for that long we are dealing with a government that will never respect the church does not respect the rights of citizens so we are happy our women that you are now standing and putting on your armor to fight Honorable Mabonga, please, can you, can you say something? Thank you very much, Leader of Opposition. Good evening, countrymen and women. As you can see, we are extremely sad as women, like the chairperson has stated. Um, the past few months or years uh, that the UPND government has taken over the running of the affairs of this country, I think we have seen the worst that any any uh, uh, government has ever done to its citizens. I'm, I'm standing next to a young man, uh, and, and I'm, a, I'm a mother, I'm a, I'm a woman, I feel sad. This young man has spent his 13 days 
in, in, the, in custody, he has spent 13 days in prison. That's what we can say. For what? What did he do? And most of these uh, charges, like you have seen, they are, they are neither here nor there. They are fabricated, and, and, and we are worried as, as women where this country is going to. At the moment, you can see the environment is so, it, it's something else. So I'm calling on even other women out there. Don't see it like this is just politics at the end of the day. If it's happening to us, it can happen to you as well. We might not even know about it. Because look, the, the, the man that I'm standing next to is not even a politician. He's just a young man who commented on what is happening. He's not happy. He saw something that was not going right, and he decided to speak out. And he was picked up and kept for 13 days in prison. What about you out there? So Zambians, I don't know why we have kept quiet while we are watching. Our country is plunging into something else. Otherwise, as your leaders, we are in shock because each and every day we spend our time in court. We spend our time at the police station looking for our friends, looking for our colleagues each and every day. And this is what the UPND, when they were campaigning, they were campaigning against. And when they came in power, they were shouting the loudest that they were going to rule this country uh, using the rule of law. So I'm wondering, and I'm, I'm, I'm in shock. I don't even know what I can call this. Is this the rule of law? If you can keep somebody for 13 days without taking them to court, is this what the, the constitution says? Is this what the law says? So, and, and, and like everyone else has said, we, we were in parliament even today. They are denying that they, they are not doing these things. But behind the scenes, this is what is happening. So we've decided to be coming to the media, show evidence that this is what they are doing so that you people out there can wake up and see what we are going through. And even us as your leaders, we are not sleeping. We are not sleeping each and every day. We are in court each and every day we are over charges that are not even here or there. Why? It's because they've even failed to govern. They've failed to reduce the price of millimeter. They've failed to reduce the price of fuel. And they want to take it on us, innocent as we are. We were voted for by the people to come and represent the people. Unfortunately, even representing you, the people, is not as easy as you think. Because even, even when you want to speak out, you are curtailed. When you want to speak out, the next thing is you'll be picked up and locked up for, for unknown charges. So as, as women, we want to condemn this to, to the highest level. I don't know what I can, the words that I can use to express the, the disappointment that I feel, even with the president. And he seems not even to care. As we are talking, he's not even here. But he knows what is happening. Because I can assure you that no, no, no member of parliament can be, can be arrested without people informing uh, the president that a member of parliament will be arrested. What does he do? He keeps quiet. And he keeps on talking about other things that are not even important. But what is happening in the country is, is uncalled for. This is bad. This is very sad. Look at the young man who spent his time uh, 13 days in, in prison. What's going to happen? Who's going to answer for, for what has just happened to him? So in short, we are sad as women, and we are here. We'll continue protecting and standing up for, for our young people, standing up for women and other colleagues that are going through what they are going through. Thank you so very much. Thank you. So we'll continue with our address. We are going around, and uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep the nation informed as we, we check for some Oh, 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 Madam Miranda. How are you? How are you? Madam Miranda, just, just plug it on. Oh, just move, move, move here a little bit. Just please move here, move here a little bit. Move here a little bit. Is is any other problem? Yeah. He's complaining. Huh? Oh, he's complaining. He's scared of San Chad. Oh, he's scared. Yeah. But the couple guys, they should come on here. Yeah, one hour and uh -huh. uh, Good evening, fellow countrymen and women. I rarely comment on such matters. I'm one of the saddest members of parliament coming from Eastern Province, where is one Patel comes from. You see, because of having the good policies, we have even been able to attract Muslims to come along. Rizwan is not only a Zambian, he is a Muslim, and we claim to be a Christian nation and tolerating other religions. Getting Rizwan all the way from Petauke and bringing him here and not informing us, the people from Eastern Province, to say your person is this side, it becomes very sad. We are unable to go and visit him 
and you see, even provide for him some warm clothes, would want to be there when our people are being persecuted. But you'll find that it's very difficult. Zambia is a democratic nation. We have the opposition and we have the ruling. Why not allow the opposition to offer credible checks and balances? What these youths are saying is what made the patriotic front to lose power. The moment you try to gag the youth, what are you going to do? You lose power. These are the youths who continue to tell the governments of the day because they are bold enough to say it as it is. Me, I can have reservations to say, no, I have grandchildren, I have one. But the youth will tell you as it is. They are not going to sugarcoat. My appeal to the president of the Republic of Zambia, everything else is in you. You are the appointing authority. You are the one who appointed even the inspector general of police. They report to you. You have DIRs every day, daily incident reports. You receive them either from office of the president or from the police. I mean, we can't move on like this. How are you uniting us as a country? If you say this is what used to happen a long time ago, is this what you desire to continue? If it wasn't good for you then, is this what you want to perpetuate for our people in Zambia? My appeal to you as a mother, coming from Eastern province is please tell us where Rizwan Patel is so that we can go and see him as his parents so that we can be able to offer the support and the solidarity that is needed. It's not easy to be incarcerated. The way our young boy was incarcerated, Thompson. I don't know for this week and the other week it has just been Easterners, Easterners. Thompson from my constituency was in. And now you have gone for his one. What is it that you have to? You should understand that Eastern Province, they had a choice. That's why they were independent MPs, they were European MPs, and they were Patriotic Front MPs. It is wrong to just target those you feel are supporting the Patriotic Front. At the end of the day, try by all means to unite this nation. We need the peace that we fought for in 1964. We can't be moving like this as if we are still in the colonial era. I mean, this is modern society. Let us do things which we talk about on the floor of the house. They must reflect outside. Inside, we are talking something else. And then when we go outside, there is a totally different thing that is obtaining. It's not good, you know, to dupe people or to lie to them, to say we are a holy government and yet you are busy doing a lot of evil around. It's not good. My appeal to you as a mother coming from Eastern province, where Thompson comes from, where Rizwan comes from, please help us so that these, our boys, are safe and they should be able to work freely. At the end of the day, if you gag the opposition, you should know that you are on your way to a downstream and it will be very difficult to come out. I submit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, countrymen and women, uh, as we go around, I want to say something. Let's continue praying for our leaders. Uh, what we have, we have a group of leaders who are not in the habit of telling the truth. So let's commit them to prayer so that uh, Honorable Jack Mwimbu should come on the floor of the house and tell the Zambian people the truth and confess and ask for forgiveness that his police officers are busy abducting people. Tom Sonia is an example. Comrade Mwamba is an example. Honorable Shakapusa is an example and many other examples like Rizwan Patel. So it's very unfortunate that today, this evening, Honorable Jack Mwimbu maintains the position that they're not abducting uh, members of the public. Mrs. Mwansa, Honorable uh, Tasila, uh, please uh, speak to the nation. Thank you, Leader of the Opposition. Um, I just wanted to say that it's very, very disappointing to, to stand here next to a young person and see him go through this for 13 days. We're looking for another young person now. We have no idea. We've been to three police offices. We have no idea where he is. And government today is telling us that they're following the, the rule of law. You cannot suppress people from speaking. And this issue of telling lies, every single, every single day, it's to the police with lies. Yes. <laughs> lies, lies and lies and lies, we're tired. The Zambian people have issues that are affecting their lives. Hunger is one of them. It's a very serious issue at the moment. I want to urge the government, let us focus. We're members of parliament, we're leaders. We are here, even in the house we've been talking. And even in the house when we try to talk, we're, we're gagged. We're told to sit down, we're disrespected. We 
are representing the people of Zambia. It must stop here. We thought that we should come here and we should express ourselves. Some of the issues that we can't speak in the house, the minute we do that, it's the presiding officers coming in and telling us to stop. This is the right that we have to speak for the people of Zambia. So please tell us where the young man is. It's, it's his right. We can go and see him. His family can go and see him. And to the young people out there, like you've always spoken, you spoke up when you thought it was wrong. You supported the current government. It doesn't matter who is in that seat. Speak your hearts. Continue to be brave. Thank you so much, Leader of the thank, Opposition. Thank you. I submit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is, is, is young Kapianga saying something? Honorable. <laughs> because this is about uh, young Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, uh, leader of opposition and uh, a member of central committee. Uh, we are very uh, saddened by the turn of events because the UPND, when they were in opposition, they campaigned on the platform of giving liberties to, to the Zambian people. Even when they knew the Zambian people had more liberties of even insulting the then president without facing the wrath that our youths and all the Zambian people are facing right now when they speak against the high cost of living, when they speak against the high uh, uh, fuel prices, when they speak against the shortages of medicines in hospitals. What this gentleman was arrested for is just a post on Facebook, perhaps even talking about the shortages of medicines. We are also aware of youths who were arrested on the copper belt for speaking against uh, road shedding then. They were arrested. They were abducted. Members of parliament are being abducted. And what is so surprising is that only three, I mean, two regions are culprits in this case. They are the only offenders at the moment. It's so surprising. We are asking ourselves, how is it possible that only three regions are offenders every day, every time? It's a question that the Zambian people must ask themselves. Even the youths right now are on social media. Ask yourself. You will be arrested for, for posting a picture of yourself one day, not very, uh, very far from now, that will happen. We want to appeal to His Excellency the President that please, please defend the Constitution, which you sought to defend. Defend the rights of the Zambian people against those political cadres that are masquerading as police officers, because we are aware. They are political cadres who are masquerading as police officers. And these are the people who are pointing who should be arrested next. I thank you so much, Leader of Opposition. Yes, thank you. So the point that Honorable Kapianga brings out is very important. Uh, the cadres who are posing as police officers have not been trained with police officers. They do not even understand the procedures of arrest and so on. So when they've arrested somebody like Thompson Piri, after uh, the arrest, they did not know what to do. So if... We, we did not bother to look for Thompson. He was going to be there for even a year. Remember, the people that were effecting the arrests did not know what to do after incarcerating. They are not trained at any procedure at all. The procedure of arrest is unknown to them. So this is the Zambia that you are in, uh, countrymen and women. Those people were coming as plain clothes policemen, carrying AK-47 rifles, carrying state uh, guns and weapons, are not police officers. Most of them are just a, a political cadres. People like Thompson, who are young and they, they socialize quite a bit, were able to identify some of them. The other people who are detained at Emmersdale and Woodlands Police were able to identify some of those and said, uh, Boss, Siva police makadas waja. apply kungena ku police, for them to become into. So, can you see how dangerous it is? That is the reason why we are now having a, a, a heinous crime. You know, today there was a question on the floor of the house. I think about some incident in Akonde where weapons like AK-47 rifles were used. Yeah. So we are calling upon the police. Can you ensure that you only allow those who are trained police officers employed under Zambia police to interrogate suspects? Can you IG? Ensure that we do not have 
UPND cadres accompanying other police officers and in, he, he started interrogating the suspects and persecuting and torturing you know, innocent citizens. I thank you very much.